Hello again and welcome back. <clears throat> in the last video, I spoke about how to kind of create edges uh, using both NetworkX and Matplotlib so that we could connect two nodes together. One of the problems that we saw, however, was that when we mapped out these edges and nodes, we still didn't have any labels to actually identify who was who in our map. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do just that. So we're basically just exclusively going to talk about how to create labels and how to format labels. So I'm sticking with the same data that we have here from the last video. So if you remember correctly how to do this, we're simply going to type in nx.draw and then we're, oh, we want to draw a g. We want to uh, g.add edges from, and we want to create that from names. And we want to plt.show, and that's going to plot everything out. So just to make sure everything works correctly, and it does, we see our network map here. What, however, or how, however, do we get these labels to appear? Well, let's do that. The way in which we're going to do that is we are going to pass arguments through the draw function. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, and as we get into more advanced networks, I'm going to show, or I'm going to introduce you to other methods for doing this. But for right now, this is a very simple and very basic way to do it. More advanced methods allow you to control the color, the shape, and the label size, and all of this based upon a myriad of factors ranging from frequency of nodes appearance in the network map to uh, really just anything you want. So let's just do it in a very basic way. We are going to pass another argument to the draw function. We are going to say with labels equals true. And over here, I have a list of these arguments. So let's see what happens when we plot this out. We now see labels appearing with all of these nodes. We can see Betty and Wilma. We can see Tom, Jerry, Bob, Jake, and Walter. And just to demonstrate how this is working, I'm going to create another edge between Jerry and Betty. Remember, I can do this in two different ways. I'm going to, however, use this uh, method here using the tuple list, list of tuples. And we want to say, what did I say? Jerry and Betty, I think that's what I said. We're going to plot this out. And now we see everyone connected in perfect harmony, kumbaya. But however, if, uh, let's go ahead and just connect Walter and Wilma together as well, just so we can kind of see a more sophisticated map. Walter, and we want to connect him to Wilma. Wonderful. Now we should see something that looks like a circle. There we go. And we do. So... There are other arguments that we can pass. One of the more useful ones, as you get more sophisticated with your um, with your networks, you're going to want to change this font size. So let's say we want to do it at uh, 8 to make things a little bit smaller. Now we see that it's reduced to 8. We still have these networks uh, maps being shown, but now, however, we have this data rendered uh, with smaller font, with smaller label font sizes. We can also pass this data, pass another argument. We can make a font color equal to red. Change the font color. And now we see this rendered as red. And that is kind of hard to read, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. But you can make the font color whatever you want. We can also, and this is pretty fun, we can pass an argument called bbox. And bbox is going to take a dictionary. Uh, or it's going to take a, uh, a tuple converted to a dictionary. For right now, I'm going to leave this blank, however. And I want to just show you what, what happens when we do this. What's happening is it's creating a box around our labels. And this box size is going to be dictated by our font size. So let's increase this to 20 just to demonstrate this. We see that our box size has increased to correspond to the increase in our font size. It's going to adjust with the fonts. I'm going to go back to 12. It might look, however, like this square has changed the node shape. We haven't actually changed the node shape yet at all. I'm going to show how to do this in a later video. Uh, I believe it's down here when I talk in lectures 10 and 11, when I talk about node size and node coloring. For right now, however, I want to demonstrate that our nodes have not changed. Did, to demonstrate that, I'm going to pass an argument of alpha. And what alpha is, is it's going to take a float, which is a decimal point, and I'm going to set the alpha to 0.5. And this is going to make the text or the box uh, a transparency level of 50%. And this is going to allow me to see through the box to demonstrate that the node is still there. As we can see, 
the box has now had a transparency and the node is still underneath it. So we haven't actually changed our node shape in any way, shape or form. We've simply created a larger box that is sitting on top of our node. <clears throat> so what if we don't like the face color of the box? We can pass a face color argument and we can actually make our box. Let's just say we want to make it red. We can make it red. And now we see that it is red. But most importantly, what I want to demonstrate is that our node should still be blue. So I'm going to change this size to four. And hopefully I can see through it. Yep, I can. So what we see here is the blue node still remaining the exact same. All we have done is altered the label box. We can do similar uh, arguments to change <coughs> to change the node color, but we're going to deal with that in a separate video. For right now, however, I hope that you kind of came away with the basic idea of how to pass arguments through the draw function. And you can do more advanced things like you can make a oop, font family family and you can make this equal to times new Roman. I believe that's how it's rendered. Um, yep. And you can, uh, I believe default in network X is sans serif, but you can kind of adjust this uh, to whatever you want. We can pass an absurd one, which I don't think will work. I think we'll get an error and we should see nothing but boxes. Let's pass wingdings just to see what happens. And yes, we do. We have, I'll, I'll just blow it up so we can kind of see the size better. We can see kind of the, uh, the issues already occurring. It's because we don't actually have that font. So we're getting nothing but errors uh, because it can't be rendered. So that's how you pass arguments through the draw function to show labels that correspond to nodes. And this is going to make your DH projects a bit more nuanced. You're going to actually be able to render uh, specific names within your network maps. And the next videos, actually the next three videos, we're going to start working with more advanced methods for handling and creating network data. We're going to store our data outside of Python and bring it in by looking at data stored in Excel files, XML files, and JSON files. And we're going to do that over the next three videos because you are never going to, in any of your DH projects, actually store your data in a Python script. You're going to store the data outside of that and you need to know how to call it and process it, analyze it, and render it as a network map. So that's what we're going to start doing in the next three videos. Thank you for listening.